Okay, thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to be here as part of this OHBM educational session on tractometry. I'll be giving a presentation called Quantifying Bundles. My name's Lauren O'Donnell, and I'm an associate professor of radiology at Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital. So the first question here is what is a bundle? So we can define bundles using diffusion MRI tractography in many ways. And I believe there was a previous talk primarily about this, so I won't talk too much about it, but we can see here in the leftmost image that we have the result of performing diffusion MRI tractography in the entire brain and you get a lot of streamlines. So you can see in the upper right, one possible way to define bundles uh, based on major anatomically named white matter fiber tracts. These are some association tracts that were defined using uh, my group's atlas. In the lower right, you can see other kinds of bundles that are located in the superficial white matter that don't have anatomical names because they're less well studied, but they're still consistent in the population and were also defined uh, with an atlas developed my, by my group. And then in the bottom middle, you can see a different way to define bundles, which is not really by the, the course of the white matter fiber tracts, but is by the cortical regions shown in light gray that the streamlines connect to. So there are a lot of ways to define bundles. And really bundle parcellation is the first step and it's important because it defines where we measure something to quantify these bundles using diffusion MRI. And on the left, you can see that the uh, bundle definition based on connections between pairs of gray matter regions is inspired by a long neuroanatomical history of tract tracing experience, experiments. These are invasive experiments where a tract tracer is injected into uh, usually the cortex of um, um, a non-human primate, such as a macaque brain. And you can see in this lower left image, uh, several region, regions of the cortex where tracer was injected. Now on the right, you can see the other type of bundle parcellation deals usually with anatomically named tracts or major bundles. And this really relates to a long neuroanatomical history of dissection of brains. And you can see here a picture of a post-mortem dissection showing, for example, the arcuate fasciculus and the uncinate fasciculus fiber tracts. So this parcellation is going to define where we measure. Once we've defined where we want to measure, the next question really is what should we measure from these bundles? So this is really an open question. How should we quantify bundles or perform quote, tractometry as it's sometimes called? In my opinion, this is an exciting avenue of research and there are also many good ways to do this already that I'll, that I'll discuss in this talk. Uh, one way is connectivity strength. Another way depends on the tissue microstructure of the connections as measured by diffusion MRI. And finally, we can also look at the shape of these connections or fiber tracts and their volume and more. And in many cases, uh, a computational pipeline to measure these things includes some common steps. One step includes uh, correction or corrections to improve tractography results which can include data-driven filtering uh, to improve the correspondence of the streamlines with the underlying diffusion MRI data, or it can include uh, removal of expert-defined or anatomically curated false positive streamlines that are incorrect. And then another step that's important that we've discussed already is segmentation into bundles. And finally, the step that we'll talk about in the rest of this talk is quantification of the bundles. There are more details uh, about these three steps in our recent review paper from last year that's shown in the lower right in neuroimage. And so for the rest of the talk, I'll, it's a brief talk, so I'll focus on quantification of the bundles. I'll talk about connectivity strength, tissue microstructure, and other options such as shape. So first, how do we quantify bundle connectivity strength? So this is a visualization of a connectivity strength matrix. On the left, you can see a parcellation of the cortex, the gray matter of the cortex into multiple regions. And then typically and traditionally, the connectivity strength is measured between, pa between pairs of gray matter regions, such as cortical regions and or subcortical regions. And there are many, many different parcellations and options of how to do this. 
And then on the right, the desired output is a connectivity matrix, which is an N by N matrix, where N is the number of gray matter regions. And the entries in this connectivity matrix are derived somehow from diffusion MRI tractography, and they represent the putative strength of that connection. So what is the history of this method? The earliest uh, quantitative connectivity matrix that I know of derived from diffusion MRI is from 2002 uh, from Dave Tuck's thesis. And he did a small experiment with a subregion of the cortex and measured a cortical cortical connectivity matrix that you can see here in the rightmost image. And in his case, connectivity strength was actually quantified uh, based on a function of how well the, the the trajectory of the connection corresponded with the underlying um, diffusion uh, fiber model, the underlying ODF that he had proposed. So it was really advanced for its time and he made a beautiful image here on the right. So that means we have over 20 years now of quantifying the connectivity matrix from diffusion MRI tractography. So how are we doing it now in 2023? So first I'd like to point out, there's definitely a mature literature about how to do this uh, very well. And the next talk I believe deals with how to um, improve quantification of connectivity strength. But at a basic level, this quantifies bundles that run between pairs of gray matter regions. And usually the strength is a function of the number of streamlines connecting these two regions. Now, this is obviously a challenge because the goal is to get and obtain a measurement from diffusion MRI that somehow reflects the actual axonal connectivity between these gray matter regions. So there are challenges, like with all um, quantification of bundles. So one challenge is that only measuring one scalar is an extreme simplification of all the information that's available from tractography. Um, in this method, anatomical false positive connections can be included in the connectivity strength because generally the streamlines aren't viewed or curated. And then fundamentally the strength measurement is an unsolved problem because axons are so much smaller than voxels. As an example, the axon packing density in the corpus callosum is over 300,000 uh, per square millimeter. So it's actually amazing that given all that, that we can still recover truly meaningful connectivity strength estimates from diffusion MRI tractography. So some benefits include the fact that it's a very powerful abstraction. It enables data-driven analyses to study the structural connectivity of the whole brain. Um, it enables graph theoretic network analyses. And because it's really cortex-centric and it's interpreted in, term, in terms of the cortex, it enables direct comp comparisons to functional connectivity that's also measured between pairs of gray matter regions. And finally, a nice benefit that's quite interesting is that this overall methodology enables direct comparison to quantitative track tra tracing measures from histology. And this image on the right is taken from uh, a recent paper that looked at the cortical connectivity of the macaque brain and compared it uh, between tracer injections and tractography. And that's what you can see on the right. You can see a parcellation of the cortex that was used in the study and the histological connectivity based on um, historical tract tracing data and the tractography connectivity uh, based on uh, tractography using this cortical parcellation. And as you can see in the top and the bottom images, uh, there's a lot of similarities and it's pretty remarkable. So our next um, option for quantifying fiber tracts is to measure uh, the, the tissue microstructure of the bundles. So what does tissue microstructure look like? This is a visualization of bundle tissue microstructure of the most popular measure, I would say in the world, the fractional anisotropy, derived, excuse me, from the uh, diffusion tensor model. And so the fractional anisotropy quantifies how anisotropic the diffusion is in the sense it quantifies how far the shape of diffusion is from a sphere. So in highly oriented regions, such as you can see here in purple, um, there's a, a strong orientation of all the fibers in the middle of the corpus callosum, and that's the highest fractional anisotropy. And then there is, as expected, lower fractional anisotropy um, as the streamlines head into the cortex. So how do we measure tissue microstructure? What's the history of this? 
I love this picture on the left from 1996. That's from Carlo Pierpaoli's paper in radiology about diffusion tensor MR imaging of the human brain. And this is a really wonderful visualization that, that gives a lot of intuition into what we're measuring with tissue microstructure. Um, it shows the white matter has um, generally high anisotropy and generally low trace, which is proportional to the mean diffusivity that we generally measure now. And so you can see that the y-axis of this plot is the anisotropy and the x-axis of this plot is the mean diffusivity or the trace, which is proportional to it. And so the white matter regions tend to have lower mean diffusivity or trace and higher anisotropy. And you can see those white matter regions in this image. Then you can see the gray matter regions with the single tensor DTI model tend to have low anisotropy and low trace and the cortical uh, spinal fluid tends to have in general higher trace. And, and so this is some of the beginning, some of the first images really measuring the tissue microstructure in the brain in 1996. So this has been a long while. And on the right, you can see some recent papers that show we're still trying to figure out how to do this in the best way, but there've been lots of advances. So there's still a lot of work in 2017. There's a review on how we can best image brain microstructure uh, with diffusion MRI scanning. And you can see recently in 2022, there's an article and people are, are still trying to understand how the anisotropy, this, in this case, the fractional anisotropy really depends on different parameters of the diffusion MRI scan. So there's still a lot of challenges in interpreting these tissue microstructure measures. And then in the bottom right, you can see, as you probably expect, there are starting to be reviews com coming out about how to measure tissue microstructure um, using artificial intelligence. So there's been a long history of and a lot of progress in measuring tissue microstructure. So how do we do it today and how do we measure bundle microstructure within fiber tracts? On the left here, you can see a picture of an example fiber tract, the arcuate fasciculus. This is the left arcuate fasciculus of one example healthy person from the uh, Human Connectome Project Young Adult data set. And it's colored by its fractional anisotropy. Um, which you can see as this is white matter, it's fractional anisotropy um, is relatively high. I can also mention this is uh, traced with a multi-fiber model. So this is considered to be a tract specific fractional anisotropy measure. So if we have this bundle, then how do we measure its microstructure? The most typical and common way is still to take the mean fractional anisotropy in the entire bundle, which is shown here in the middle. And then another way is to measure the fractional anisotropy to average it at multiple locations along the fiber tract. And this image on the right was made with some uh, nice software called AFQ or automated fiber tract quantification. And you can see down here, there are some citations here at the bottom about um, basically measuring uh, fractional anisotropy or other measures along the fiber tract. And you can see that's been done actually since 2004, if not earlier. So it's been a long while, but now there's mature software that can do this in a really nice fashion and there are multiple methods available. So there are lots of ways to measure bundle microstructure. There are lots of microstructure measurements. What are some benefits of, of taking this strategy to quantify bundles? One benefit is that you can study microstructure at many scales. You can do a bundle mean, or you can study it along uh, an entire fiber track. This overall strategy can facilitate hypothesis-driven research into particular white matter tracts that are in of interest, and you can attribute results to a particular anatomical fiber tract. And overall, this method has enabled many studies of the brain. You can see an example study. I have images on the bottom to have some pretty pictures of an example study. This is a study from my group where on the lower left, you can see um, uh, 20 association uh, fiber tracts in the brain that were automatically extracted. And you can see in the middle that we discovered that the mean fractional anisotropy of many of these tracts had a significant influence on individual language performance as measured by a picture vocabulary assessment. And so there are many, many more studies like this that are able to investigate uh, the tissue mi microstructure of different fiber tracts in health and disease. However, there definitely remain many challenges. One challenge is the choice of measure. I believe there's another talk today earlier in the day about how 
we can quantify uh, tissue microstructure and all of the many options and challenges and benefits. And so in addition to choosing what you would like to measure, there's the choice of how to quantify it within the bundle. So perhaps you want to measure free water or fractional anisotropy or any other measure. One straightforward way is to sample this measure from scale, a scalar image such as an FA image. So just basically sample it within the region of your bundle. But this measure isn't specific in any way to the fiber or the tract being traced. Another option is to directly estimate the fiber specific model and its microstructure during fiber tracking. So for example, my group uses a method called unscented common filter tractography. And during fiber tracking, um, there's a multi-tensor model and the tensor being followed is considered to be specific to the fiber track that we're studying. So in that case, we can directly get uh, fiber specific uh, microstructure measures at each point in the fiber track from the tractography. Another method is uh, to try to attribute part of the voxel specific model from, a, from an image to the streamline as a post process. For example, I have two citations at the bottom, one for UKF and one for a recent paper that I saw that, that attempts to attribute uh, the most relevant uh, part of a local uh, fixel at the voxel to the fiber track that's passing through it to get some fiber specific information about microstructure. So there's obviously a lot of options here and they can vary in specificity to the fiber tracks and also in their sensitivity to disease. And we don't really know a priori which of these methods will be most uh, sensitive to what we want to study. And so then another challenge, a fundamental challenge is that once you've measured this within your bundle, um, using only one scalar such as a bundle mean definitely loses a lot of information that was previously available in the fiber tract. And finally, another challenge is that intensive computational processing is needed for large data sets to achieve this sort of uh, bundle specific measurement. So one of the things that my group has done recently is we're trying to address the challenge of uh, how much computation is needed to extract, extract these tract specific or tractometry measures from a large data set. Uh, we have an R01 that uh, Yogesh Rathi and I, uh, Lauren O'Donnell, are co-PIs on this R01. And we've recently uh, released a tract microstructure data set um, from the Adolescent Brain Cognitive Development Study date, data. And I'll talk about the picture first. Um, the, the, the process here, we started with the ABCD database that had diffusion MRI data. Um, from 33 scanners after um, some quality control that we did. So we had started with uh, there's over 9,000 subjects here and we performed data harmonization to remove uh, differences between scanners. So there wouldn't be any remaining scanner specific bias in the data. After that, we performed whole brain tractography in all of these 9,000 subjects. We used some of my group's automated methods to extract subject specific white matter parcellation, including 73 anatomical tracts. And then from all those tracts and also from some more fine parcellated clusters, we extracted diffusion MRI measures of microstructure in each tract. And so now that was over 9,000 subjects and it took approximately 50,000 CPU hours on um, AWS on Amazon. So this was pretty intensive. We recently released the harmonized diffusion MRI data, the anatomical tracts and the microstructure measures. They're openly available at NIA, which is the NIMH uh, data archive. And you can see its URL down here and you can search harmonized ABCD to get the data. So if you would like to go directly to studying some measurements uh, from fiber tracts without having to do any of the extensive processing I'm uh, discussing here, you can just directly go and download um, a large spreadsheet of all that data from this website. So in addition to what we've previously discussed about connectivity strength and uh, microstructure and many ways to measure these, there are more possible bundle measurements. For example, there's the shape, there's the volume, there's the spatial extent, and there are more ways under investigation to measure and quantify bundles from diffusion MRI tractography. So one example is bundle shape. And so I've titled this slide bundle shape then and now. This image over here on the left from 2006 is one of the earliest papers that I know that uh, studied uh, the shape of fiber tracts. 
And in this paper, they had two diffusion MRI data sets. And this image uh, shows the major, um, the major excess of variation the, the, um, from an eigen decomposition of the middle cere cerebellar peduncle. So this shows like how the shape of the multiple streamlines varied in comparison to some kind of a canonical or mean streamline that they've chosen. chosen. And you can see that this is a way to investigate differences in the shape across these two subjects using a compact shape representation. So that was way back in 2006. And then more recently in 2009, um, there's a beautiful image, a surface intended to represent the medial surface of the corpus callosum. And this type of representation of bundle shape was used in some statistical analyses. And then finally on the right, there's a more recent paper uh, called Shape Analysis of the Human Association Pathways. And it's a nice paper where they analyze many uh, many uh, data sets for many individuals in the Human Connectome Project. And they look at the variability and the reproducibility of some straightforward shape measures like the diameter and length and radius that you can see here. So it's now becoming practical to investigate bundle shape on sort of a larger scale and, and potentially very useful in the future, and I would say understudied in general. Another recent thing uh, that my group has been working on is trying to analyze the entire bundle. So rather than extracting particular features, is there a way that we can tune the actual analysis pipeline to be able to use the entire bundle as input? So we've uh, developed a ge geometric deep learning approach that was published last year at uh, the Medical Image Computing and Computer Assisted Intervention Conference. And you can see here on the left that the input to this method is an entire fiber tract that's represented as a point cloud. If you look closely, you can see many little dots in this image. And this is a picture of a, an example arcuate fasciculus, again, from a subject um, who was scanned as part of the HCP young adult data set. And every one of these points represents a point along a streamline in the arcuate fasciculus. And they're colored by the FA fractional anisotropy of that point. And so what we showed in this paper actually is that we could develop a deep learning, a geometric deep learning pipeline that could take this type of data as input and use it to improve prediction of individual performance on a language assessment in comparison to other methods of representing uh, the arcuate fasciculus and its microstructure. And over here on the right, you can see an interesting interpretation result where you see arcuate fasciculi from five uh, different uh, subjects as input and the red points represent the points within the arcuate fasciculus whose posi position and microstructure were highly important for language pr prediction. And across almost 200 testing subjects in the lower right, in general, many of these points were located in the middle rostral middle frontal cortex and in Broca's area. So they were located in uh, regions that we expect to be important for language. So this was an interesting way to initially attempt to see if we can analyze the entire bundle without reducing it um, actually to different extracted measures. So it looks like I've reached the end. In conclusion, there are many ways to quantify bundles using diffusion MRI tractography. The most popular measures include connectivity strength and diffusion MRI tissue microstructure measures. And alternative analyses include shape and new deep learning methods that are under development. And so overall, many, many studies have demonstrated the power of quantitative analyses of tractography in both health and disease and to help us better understand how the brain works. However, tractogra tractography processing of large data sets can be very intensive. And I note here that if you'd like to avoid tractography processing a large data set, we've released one uh, lately. We've released a harmonized data set of the adolescent brain cognitive development uh, um, study, and it contains uh, fiber tracts and tissue microstructure measures from over 9,000 um, children. And you can search harmonized ABC at the NIH NDA website to find it. And so overall, I think that future machine learning approaches may both speed processing and may be able to help improve our understanding of the brain's white matter fiber tracts. 
Thank you very much again to the session organizers, um, to OHBM for inviting me and to all of my collaborators and students and postdocs and to our Slicer DMRI software that was used to make most of the images in this talk that came from my group. Thank you very much again.